Chapter 1. Grief is messy. You aren't crazy. You are just grieving. A magic cure for grieving hasn't been invented yet. Unfortunately, you can't turn off the pain. But what you can do is learn how to live with it, find a new self, and create a new sense. Grief day by day is like a friend ready to assist you, get you up, and hold you from falling back again. Although denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance are the traditional stages of grief, don't expect any certainty from them. Even Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, the psychiatrist who pointed them out, admitted that they come up in a chaotic sequence with different duration. Keep in mind, your main goal in this journey is to learn to be fully alive, even grieving. There is no specific time frame for overcoming a loss. The healing process differs from person to person, and for some people, it can be measured in months, while for others, it can be years. The book's chapters are divided into 52 weeks, but this division is an example of the author's personal experience. Jan says that after a year, she found ways to cope with grief. Our minds are eager to take it all under control. But in the case of grieving, you have to be patient with the unpredictability of your state. Just open any chapter you like and let your feelings be. Eventually, you will notice that grief can inspire you instead of pushing you down. This summary will deepen your understanding of grieving and explain the emotions we encounter and our psyche's unconscious mechanisms. Normal is different for different people. Instead, I ask myself if something serves the kind of life I want to live. If it does, I accept it. If it doesn't, I see if I can change it. If I can change it, I am patient with myself. I am grieving. Sometimes breathing is enough. Jan Warner Did you know, grief can be caused by losing a job, experiencing a breakup, ending a friendship, or even selling a family home. Chapter 2 Weeks 1-4 through four, Accepting the Loneliness and Collecting Memories Loss is excruciating, and you may feel that you are on your own with this pain. Even though you are surrounded by family, friends, or pals, the person you lost isn't there anymore. Their absence is causing your loneliness. You need to accept this separation and that no single person in the world would be able to replace them because their memory will always have a space in your heart. The paradox is that the only person with whom you wish to share your loss is not alive anymore. Even after eight years, Jan Warner says she still wants to hold her husband's hand, look into his eyes, and watch how he smiles. Keep in mind, grief creates a barrier between you and the outer world. Grievers often prefer to distance themselves from the crowd. You don't try to reach out to other people when you're grieving because it doesn't make sense. They offer you assistance, but the one thing you want is to get that one person back, and unfortunately, nobody can help with that. Although the author believes that our memories can bring joy and soothe the grieving journey, our recollections are the only places we can still spend time with those who left. However, memories can be a source of sadness and pain for some people, but can be controlled if used wisely as a tool. So, use these pictures in your head when you miss them the most. Go back to the beautiful moments when you first met, when you were laughing together or watching sunsets. Memories warm you up from the inside, but they also tear you apart. Haruki Murakami When you lose somebody, you may feel that you've lost a part of yourself. Our close connections share the same characteristics and habits that define our personalities. So, it is normal to undergo an identity crisis after such a tragedy. But piece by piece, you will have to rebuild a new version of yourself. Chapter 3 Weeks 5 through 10 Grief warriors face confusion, fear, and denial. The feeling of grief is much more powerful and darker than you could have ever imagined. Basically, you must cope with a new reality right away. A reality without your loved one. Skeptics wonder how the death of much older people or those who suffer from illnesses can be unexpected. But you can never be ready for when it happens. You shouldn't blame yourself for grieving in cases when death was expected. Keep in mind, grief brain is a normal reaction of your body to the stress caused by the loss. You may suffer from a confused mind and feel muddled. Jan Warner admits that her husband was her safe space, and the moment he passed away, she lost the feeling of safety. Living without a loved one isn't only sad and painful, it's scary. Your heart will ache, and your brain suffers from intrusive thoughts. While grieving one person, you may fear that other people you love may also die. That's why our consciousness needs some time to adapt to the rapid changes that come with loss. We were building plans, we had dreams, and now it's all gone. Don't forget, the repercussions of loss can lead to mental diseases such as PTSD, depression, and panic attacks. Speaking with a therapist can help. 
Sometimes you need to take care of your mental health and take a day off from grieving. How can you do that? You can make your wish come true and imagine that your loved one is alive for a day. Denying their death won't bring them back, but it can soothe your pain for a day or two. The relief you feel is joyful, but be careful with your imagination not to hurt yourself even further. For instance, there's nothing wrong with talking to them at the end of the day, but don't wait for them to knock on the door. Our loved ones don't die once. They die every second we think of them and know we have to live our life without them. Jan Warner Chapter 4 Weeks 11 through 20. Not all coping mechanisms are healthy. When you grieve, your body and mind are trying to defend you from pain. To ease suffering, you may unconsciously start using coping mechanisms. For example, don't notice when you eat a chocolate bar after a tough day or train harder to release the anger after having an argument. These actions are needed to regulate your state. However, to deal with intense feelings, we use unhealthy strategies. What are they? They include all kinds of compulsive behaviors, such as eating, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, having sex, or any other activity that you might be overdoing. Some of them are more harmful than others. Addictions help us stop feeling empty inside only for short periods, but can damage our health. No painkillers can stop the grief ache. You have to go through it and give time and space for your worries. And as the axe bites into the wood, be comforted in the fact that the ache in your heart and the confusion in your soul means that you are still alive, still human, and still open to the beauty of the world. Paul Harding The two main aftermaths of undergoing the loss are exhaustion and numbness. To cope with all the damaging feelings caused by grief, you need to use loads of energy, but sometimes we don't have enough strength to shower or cook meals. Jan Warner recommends setting at least one small chore for the day to keep taking care of yourself. For instance, do your dishes, cook your favorite meal for breakfast, or water the plants. Also, people may mix up your numbness with peace. Unfortunately, numbness is accompanied by emptiness. If your body and soul can't struggle anymore, they stop feeling anything. This condition is harmful and can lead to depression. Be patient and kind to yourself. Your grieving journey is exhausting. What can you do to heal? Start looking around and find beauty in simple things. Even though the world seems black and white now, Try to open your eyes wider and admit its beauty. Listen to music. It is proven that it has a curing effect on mental issues. Talk to your friends about your lost loved one as much as you need. Feel gratitude for all the moments you shared in the past. Use faith to find your inner peace. Replace lost intimacy with physical activities, massage, or other body work. If grief is unexpressed, it damages us more, not less. Jan Warner Chapter 5 Weeks 21 through 29 do not hesitate to ask for help. I know how you feel is probably the worst thing to hear as a grieving person because nobody can understand what's going on inside another's head and heart. After a funeral, you spend more time with your grief than with others, and this isolation may intensify your inner emptiness. You try to avoid situations when people may hurt you with their awkward comments, but at the same time, you miss the opportunity to get needed support. Give it a chance and find a community of like-minded people grievers, or any other group with the same interest. Set some rules and explain to them what's better for you, because most human beings have no idea how to treat grieving people. Grief is a solo trip, and others can't live through the pain instead of you, but they can be there when you need to be heard. Sometimes, society expects us to heal much faster than it's possible. It makes others feel better knowing we are fine, so you pretend to be okay to make others' lives easier. However, grief remains with you forever while showing off your real emotions and being vulnerable make you feel like a burden. Wearing a mask is a solution we use to fit in with the world. But keep in mind that you need to take care of your mental state first, and hiding your real distress isn't helpful. Remember, cry as much as you need. If you don't want to, that's normal too. Let's be honest, we have good days too. Sometimes we laugh and feel happiness again, yet these good days take turns with dark moments of despair. Mood swings are another consequence of the grieving experience. Be attentive to thoughts about your death. Sometimes after losing a significant other, we also lose a desire to live. You may think that it's impossible to survive the pain you feel after the loss. However, we should continue living in remembrance of our loved ones. Choosing life is a brave decision. If you feel doubts, please contact National Suicide Prevention Lifeline or reach out to a therapist for a consultation. Try to observe for a couple of days what affects your mood. Please make a list of the triggers to be conscious of their influence on your mental state. Chapter 6. 
Weeks 30 through 37. Hope will rise again. Hope is the force that helps us get out of bed every morning. At first, you might feel that hope died with a person you lost. However, it's not forever. You can bring it back to your life. Even after the darkest night, the sun will rise again. The author admits that grief will stay with you, but you can live with it. You can go through all the pain if you have hope in your heart. Hope is the feeling we have that the feeling we have is not permanent. Minot McLaughlin Instead, what poisons our hearts are regrets and thoughts about what we could have done or said. You need to understand that repentance is pointless. The past is gone, but you are stuck there as long as you keep torturing yourself with remorse. Replace it with love and sweet memories of the nice things you have said. Remember, write a letter to the person you lost to express all your feelings. Share with them what you haven't said, your pities, apologies, and gratitudes. Crazy things you may do as a griever. You keep wearing their clothes because doing so feels like a hug. You often stop to smell their wardrobe. You make calls or send messages to their phone number. These and many other actions seem strange to others, but they can comfort us. Don't be ashamed. All grievers are doing the same. We can learn to rebuild, much as someone who comes home after a hurricane to find their home is destroyed can build a new home. But if we hope to be the same as before, we may be disappointed. Jan Warner Chapter 7, Weeks 38 through 48 Bring a new sense to your life The first few seconds after awakening are the toughest. It's the time when you're coming back to reality. People expect you to move on, but you got stuck in Groundhog Day. Intrusive thoughts and dark images from the worst day in your life are your companions 24-7. No wonder one day it starts to affect your health, both mental and physical. If you experience any symptoms, please visit a hospital for a checkup. Every time I take a breath or blink or speak, I experience her death all over again. I don't sit here and wonder if the fact that she's dead will ever sink in. I sit here and wonder when I'll stop having to watch her die. Colleen Hoover All grievers are responsible for honoring a lost loved one's memory, and some people see it as a sense of their lives. Although you can honor them in different ways, you can make their living even more meaningful by spreading their ideas and following their values, doing charity work, or living your best life. Keep in mind, or living your best life. Make a list of the things that were important for your loved one. Try to pick a few of them that you relate to the most and can implement in your life. In the very beginning, it's hard to go out. It's hard to meet friends. Some activities you may find too overwhelming. But step by step, you can start your healing process. You don't have to feel okay to start showing up. You are alive and it's enough. Jan calls it a process because there's no end point in this journey. Grief remains inside, yet with time, it won't stop you from living. Chapter 8, Weeks 49 through 52 Celebrate small victories in a battle for a new life. Have you made your bed today? Good. Spent the whole day there? Great. Stop blaming yourself and start noticing every step you make to overcome your loss. You are a rigorous judge when it comes to yourself, so give yourself that love you intended to share with somebody else. You need it now. I dance a lot. I work grief and sadness out of my body when I dance, and I bring in joy and rhythm. Inga Muschio Is it possible to accept your loss and stop denying the heartbreaking truth? Jan Warner doesn't believe that this moment will ever come for her. Perhaps you also won't stop thinking of your loss, imagining their smile and what they would say in a particular situation. Do you ever want to stop it? For some of you, grieving is a part of life and a reminder of your beloved ones. For some of you, grieving is a part of life and a reminder of your loved ones. Use external sources for guidance. Don't hesitate to join groups of grievers. Learn about others' experiences and read more books like Grief Day by Day. Only you decide how you define grief. However, always nurture your desire to live. One day, the love in your heart will outweigh the pain. That will be the moment you know you are healing. Conclusion Grieving is a long and complex process that doesn't fit any expectations. It's more challenging than you could imagine, and it isn't linear. One day, you deny what happened, and another day, you're ready for a gathering with friends. You never know what to expect tomorrow, except for the feeling that you're missing that person. Constant loneliness may worsen your grieving journey, so try to find a community or a reliable friend to support you on your way. They can't feel what you feel or replace your loss, but they can listen and be there for you. 
Some coping mechanisms can be helpful, but overusing them may lead to negative consequences. Also, you need to take care of your health, as experiencing the loss may cause mental illnesses such as panic attacks, anxiety, and depression. Not only have you lost a person, but also a part of yourself. After some time, you will start building a new life and keep honoring your lost one. Cherish their values and try to implement their life guidelines. By doing so, you are bringing a new meaning to your life. The ability to enjoy living again comes back when you start working on your mental and physical health. Notice beautiful things, meditate, practice yoga or your favorite sport, and don't forget to nurture your body with the foods you like. Helping other people helps you heal. We are grieving because we love, so don't take it as a punishment. Learn how to deal with it and replace despair with gratitude. Try this. No matter if it's been a few days or even a year, start journaling your feelings, especially when you don't have a person to share them with. Write a story about the person you lost. It can be an actual event from their past, or use your imagination to add details. How does it make you feel that you can talk about them? Write on your mirror, I am still alive. My life has a meaning. So you can have your day with these words.